Okay, so I go to school with this guy and he becomes a documentary filmmaker and a very successful one and a very good one. How did you become a documentary filmmaker? I fell into it, um, as you know, because we went to school together. Uh, I was interested in scripted narrative stuff. I had no interest at all in making documentary films, but um, yeah, I was like a lot of guys in Los Angeles. I was writing a script. I was just finishing up a graduate degree in, in film. Oh, where did you go to grad school? Art Center, College of Design, oh, Pasadena. Okay. That's right. Uh, and uh, they're really generous with equipment, and so I had a camera package and this guy that I home taught came to me out of the blue and said, hey, my band is gonna be reuniting. Um, can you give me a ride to the pawn shop to get my guitar so I can rehearse? Because some members of the ward have given me some money. And I thought, huh, you know, there was something about the way that he was kind of pitching that to me that sounded like a Sundance documentary. I'm not kidding, I remember thinking that. Like, that yeah. sounds like a Sundance documentary. And I go, yeah, I'll give you a ride. And I go, do you mind? Is, I go, do you mind if I film you getting your guitar out of the pawn shop? He said, no, sure. And I just filmed him walk into the pawn shop, and and then I panned up to the pawn shop, and that I just kind of had this feeling like, oh, I should just keep filming, and I did. I kept filming for the next three months, and that's how we have New York Doll. Why is this movie so great? That's a really difficult question to answer. Um... That's a really, really hard question. I mean, how do you define what- Do you what... like this movie? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it's a great movie. It probably is great because it just tells a story and the story's good and it doesn't try to be anything other than it isn't. I believe that the only difference between the two mediums is um, you, in a, in, a, in, a, in a scripted film, you write the script and then you go shoot it. And then in a documentary, you go shoot it and then you go write it. And that's, that's how I've always done it. I know that there are some documentarians that will go and write it first, but I, I've never done it that way. There's been just somebody that's been interesting to me, and I just go follow them. And, and truly, where I, and I thought about this a lot, I thought about a film I saw at BYU called Potter's Mill Meal, and uh, I, I remember thinking it was just it was this fantastic movie. It had all this rich symbolism, and, uh, and this texture and subtext. And what, what kept getting me was, well, it's a documentary. I mean, Steve Alpin didn't plan any of this. All of the symbolism is stuff that just happened organically. And um, if I were to ever do a scripted film, I wouldn't want it to be any different. I'd want the stuff that's kind of the rich symbolism to happen accidentally, and I want the audience to kind of figure it out and find it and ride along with me. You're so kind. Thank you for that. The New York Dolls were ahead of their time and influenced a lot of people who influenced a lot of people uh, is important and special. But um, what I really like about the film is just the film itself, the story behind this character, this guy. He's just a, he's a great guy. Not a whole ton of people saw that movie, New York Doll, but all 10 people that saw it have formed a You're band. You're a liar. You're a liar. Everybody's <laughs> seen it. It's great. Is New York Doll good? I haven't seen She's it. She's never seen it. This would be a first time seeing it tonight. It's a great movie. Your dad makes great movies. And this is, this is the band that's warming up. This is a group of musicians who they love the New York Dolls and, and they like the movie and they're going to be playing New York Dolls songs after the screening of this movie. Um, but, but back to your question, I, I, I think that when you're making the movie you're just hanging on for dear life and you're just hoping that it comes together. And you're not really thinking about, well, what are the themes and uh, what's the story structure? You really are just pointing your camera at whatever you think is interesting and, and you and you're just hope you get to hang on to the end. And, and even as you're filming, you go, well, when you're, it's hard to tell when you're done. And in our case, it wasn't so hard to tell when we were done because um, our main subject passed away. And, and as, as, as people have pointed out, that, that's such a gift to the project. You know, it's unfortunate it's so for yeah, his friends. Not. Yeah, uh, but, you know, they're right. That, that having that poignant end, I immediately understood. Um, I didn't understand what I was filming until he passed away. And then when he passed away, I go, oh, I get it. I know, I know how to do this. And part of how, the reason I know how to do it, Steve, is my dad had passed away 
three and a half months earlier, I, I, I know what it means to treat a person's life with respect and also to be honest. And there's got to be some moments of levity because I, 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 I like fun things. I like to laugh. So there's got to be some of that too. And I love and, that you said respect. You gave such love and respect to this guy and you feel it, you know. Oh, I, 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 I appreciate it. that. I appreciate yeah. that. I'm, um, you know, I can, I, I, I'm sure, I wonder if you feel this way. I, I feel like the best parts of me um, seem to get tapped when I'm making a movie, especially a movie I love. There's, I, I tr and so that means all these Christ-like attributes that we think of, empathy, um, respect, uh, compassion, and love. These are all things that I think make for a more rich film. And so regardless of your religious faith, you'd be well served in just saying, okay, um, somebody said once of Chekhov that you want to have, uh, Chekhov was so great because he wrote with a cold eye but a warm heart. You can treat people the way you'd want to be treated if you were being filmed. And I think that means you don't want people to ignore who you really are, you, but you want people to look at you with an element of compassion. And I think, I think people like those kinds of movies anyway. I, I, do, it for, I do it as much out of uh, ambition as I do to be a good person. I think you need to go. Yeah, you're playing the harmonica. Yeah. He's playing the harmonica tonight. Are you excited for Dad? I'm more excited for the neon trees, but yeah, go Dad. Woo! <laughs> um, we're not on time, but as we'll learn in this film, Robert. It took me over an hour to get on the Santa Monica bus from the, uh, over here on um, Santa Monica and. Uh, But you did such a great job with this film, and so give it up again for